Well, today on The Boiling Point, we're gonna be talking about traditional burners and all of this linkage and how everything is moving to the linkage list. Welcome to The Boiling Point. Got Gerald Blaine here, Director of Sales here at Ware. Today we're gonna to be talking about traditional burner management systems as well as some of the micromodulation control systems that are out there. Thought today first we'd actually go through uh, the traditional burner management system with the power flame burner and also the linkages. Drew, why don't you just take us through uh, what we've got on this traditional burner. Well, traditional burners use what we call a standard flame safeguard system. This is what's causing the, uh, when the pilot lights, when the burner goes into modulation and all the different events. Um, when we say linkage, which is very traditional uh, uh, versus parallel positioning systems, these little linkage arms uh, we refer to as a single point system. So here you have the one point of control, you have your uh, what we call a modulating motor. It's got multiple arms coming off of it. Uh, one's controlling the air damper that's right here. Uh, another one is back here on the gas side, it's controlling a gas valve. We got another arm swinging over and controlling uh, the oil valves up here. So, and this one happens to be a uh, uh, low NOx system. So it's also con controlling the flue gas recirculation, except that this linkage is independent. When you have FGR, when you start up, you want to make sure it's closed. And because the standard damper over here is tied in with all of the other moving arms, it has to modulate open and close while the burner's moving. But at startup, we go ahead and shut this damper so that we don't have that condition. Okay, so when the Honeywell uh, mod motor um, is told to move, then simultaneously a lot of things start happening. It's all yeah. actually linked together so that air opens, gas opens, so on and so forth. The oil so valves oil moving. Valves now moving. the oil valves happen to be shut, they're right. told to be shut but that arm is still moving. So everything is all moving together. Okay. Uh, one of the difficult things in trying to set them all up, in order to switch over to oil, often that's your limiter. You have to set the turn down for the oil that then dictates to your gas. It's very difficult to get the turn down you want for everything. Okay, all right. So lots of screws here. What's going on with these? Uh, there's two sets of them over here controlling these rods by uh, either tightening or loosening these as they move across the cam that's what sets the distance and the stroke of each movement. Okay, through the firing range. Through the firing from range. The low to from high low fire. to high fire. Okay, um, maybe we talk a little bit about the efficiency of this, and are, do you get some slippage with the linkage? Yeah, you can. Uh, they're, they're doing a lot of new things to try to improve that, but as you can see, you've got nuts and bolts, all these things screwed together, and over time as they're moving, those things slip and they move. Same thing here. The more the mechanics move, the more things open up. So okay. you do have to maintain these. And if you're in a process environment where this unit's running 24 hours a day, you probably should be having this looked at every month at least. Okay. Why would someone pick the linkage versus the linkage list? Uh, it's cheap. Okay. So it is lower cost. Uh, it usually results in about 7, 8, 10% in more in fuel usage. Okay. So you feel like because of the price you initially paid on capital that, hey, you're getting a good deal, but long run, this is not going to pay for itself. Okay. Why don't we take a walk over and check out some of the newer technology and the newer burners that we've got back here. Okay. okay. Well, we've moved to a uh, mobile boiler room that actually has some of the newer technology. Now, we still have the, the C-Max burner. Um, some of our other boilers may have a Limpsfield burner, but we actually are using the power flame burner just like what you saw on the uh, 600 with the linkage. Now on this one we actually have um, some parallel positioning equipment on this and Gerald why don't you take us through and go through all of the different points that we just talked about but using the parallel positioning. All right. <clears throat> Unlike the uh, single point positioning what you have is a what we call a micromodulated controller uh, and what this controller does, it does the, the same flame safeguard things that you saw on the other unit, but it also does PID control as well. So we're taking one set of brains that are configurable and with different kinds of options and parameters. You can set it up as you choose. You don't have to program it like a PLC. But what we do is we get away from just that one point of control. 
Uh, here we're, we've got a, a separate servo motor for the air. We have another one for the oil. Here we have the FGR uh, where they, we had to put another modulating motor in to break up the linkage for that. We get independent control of that. And then back here we have the gas valve as well. So each, each element is told what to do, the exact position to do it in, uh, and then it's not tied or con, uh, constrained by any of the other things that are being done. Okay, so, so in the linkage side, when that mod motor moves, it moves everything. Here, everything is actually independent with the servo motor, right? Right. Now, the servo motor looks a little bit, looks like this, okay? Maybe right. kind of walk through what these servo motors do. One of the reasons th that we use these and we like these so much is uh, other brands, like you had mentioned, that, like Cleaver, Honeywell, mm -hmm. uh, some of the other people, Siemens and all of them, what they end up doing is taking a valve that exists and then trying to put some sort of a connector to make it work. Mm -hmm. and, and inherently there's some hysteresis associated with that that we were trying to get away from from the single point positioning in the first place. Okay. At Autoflame, uh, we manufacture the valve specifically for the servo. So they're designed to be direct coupled so that we don't have any hysteresis. Okay. Uh, a lot of other people in their servo, and this is just a, a demo valve, the ones we use would look like this. They're steel, they're built for industrial applications. Uh, but one of the, the really neat things that we do uh, as part of actually a military specification is our potentiometer is directly on the end of uh, the shaft itself, where most people have their potentiometers tied into their gears. And mm -hmm. gears inherently have a little bit That's of hysteresis funny. themselves. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly what the turn on the shaft is, so we have great characterization of the valves. Okay. So the uh, you mentioned a little bit, you've got the Nexus, you've got the uh, CB Hawk, um, you've got Preferred. Um, Honeywell. Honeywell's out there. Siemens. And, and yeah. we typically, we've, we've chose um, Autoflame. And the Autoflame, this is actually an MK6, it's on here, but my understanding is the MK8 is just coming out. Right. Uh, matter of fact, at our show at ASHRAE this year, we're going to be debuting the new MK8. Um, it's actually wall-to-wall uh, -wall touchscreen. Oh, okay. Uh, in the past, our 7s ate up some of the touchscreen area, so it'll look just like a touchscreen. No, no metal you won't see. It's pretty, pretty interesting. It's high definition, okay. so it's pretty impressive. We're pretty excited about it coming out. Now, with the, um, all of the parallel positioning systems, there's a savings in gas, I'm assuming. But with the auto flame, um, you know, we're typically seeing what in, in savings in gas and efficiency with the fuel? A lot of it depends on the combustion system itself. Uh, any parallel positioning system will make improvements to the burner they're on. Mm -hmm. They're limited to what that burner's capability is. Okay. But it, it, it's not unusual to see a 7 to 12 percent improvement going to parallel positioning. Okay. We're able to do as much as 14 to 24 by taking control of the combustion system with parallel positioning. Oh, okay. So there's okay. other ways to improve that even further. Well, I know the rental um, division has adopted all the parallel positioning with all of the boilers because, um, you know, that saves fuel for the customer mm -hmm. when they're using it, right? Absolutely. Plus, a lot easier on startup. Right. Um, to where the technicians can actually get these things started a lot right. quicker. And the, and the maintenance requirement of them isn't as much. Like I said, in a process environment with uh, standard linkages, you're going to have more issues, more problems. You're going to need to correct them more often. Mm -hmm. So when we send our rentals into the field, uh, we don't want to have to deal with all of those things. Yeah, makes sense. Well, appreciate you stopping by. Whether you are uh, using a linkage or linkage list, obviously, you know, moving towards the linkage list system is saving money. And um, we appreciate you stopping by, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, appreciate Gerald stopping by with us, talking us a little bit about the parallel positioning system and some of the new technology. There's some great technology out there that's saving fuel um, and also saving some money in maintenance. Like he said, we're going to be in ASHRAE, and we'll make sure you stop by our booth. You'll see the debut of the new MK8. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to that YouTube channel. And if you don't mind, share the videos. And for my man Steve Kemp at Autoflame, we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.